Hi, it's Rob here with another video. How are you doing? I uh, wanted to show my 20 favourite albums of 2023, which I thought was a great year to get 20 albums in one year. Quite a lot for me. Putting my hand in my pocket. Streamed all these albums before I picked them up. So there's no duds here. Um, really like all these albums, but I've got to put them in order. Um, the order keeps changing. So this is the order today. Um, I don't usually show um, that much new music on my channel. So um, might be a few surprises here. Probably not got a clue what I'm going to show. So I've got 20, starting off with Rummy and uh, Midair. Came out in September. Midair, the debut album by Romy. So she was part of the trio, the XX, who their debut album came out in 2009. So she's waited 14, 15 years for this one. Uh, early 2000s, sort of trancey, housey vibe to this. Only 32 minutes long. But it could be longer for me. Got that little bit of an everything but the girl feel to it. They released an album last year and I much prefer this one. It's uh, an album full of sort of love songs. Which are danceable. The opening track, Love Her. Um, it's about four or five singles came out before this album came out. So um, everyone was aware of the feel of it. And I think it's really strong. Even though it's my number 20, I think it's a really good album. Midair by Romy. Number 19, another debut album. Blonde Shell by Blonde Shell. So I've been listening to this album for the best part of the year. I think it came out around April time. Another girl with a guitar. Mid 20s from LA. Bit of a grunge feel to it. Mid 90s indie. Uh, the opening track, Veronica Mars. Sets the tempo. It's only a short track, but it's really good. Goes into Kiss City, another track that I really like. Salad, the fourth track. But every track on every track on this album is pretty strong. Great debut. What's gonna come next? It's got a lot to live up to. I didn't pick this up till Christmas time. I've been hanging around, but bit the bullet, picked it up. Really good album. My number 19, Blonde Shell by Blonde Shell. Number 18, Yola Tango. This Stupid World. Picked this up at the beginning of the year, off the back of the track Sinatra Drive Breakdown. I remember posting it on Instagram and there were a lot of excitement from Americans saying it was a return to farm indie rock um, formed in 84 from New Jersey this album's maybe uh, suffered a little bit because it's been buying so much music maybe not giving it the attention I should have done but it's very strong I've seen a few people showing this album really enjoy it this stupid world by Yola Tango, number 18. Number 17, another debut, The Love Invention, by Alison Goldfrapp. So, Goldfrapp, um, the duo, a uh, big fan of. So when I heard this was coming out in May, I was all over it on purple vinyl. Quite polished. I do really like the remix version of this album, but I streamed this all over the summer, picked it up later in the year. Doesn't disappoint. She's touring the UK, uh, maybe try and grab a ticket. I think she's 50 years old now, so looking good. Alison Goldfrapp and uh, her debut album, The Love Invention. She went to a record company with a few songs and they enjoyed them uh, next minute they wanted an album so she thought yeah I'll go with that but they wanted the album within a couple of months 
so we had to get our skates on but yeah really enjoy this album we'll go through track by track but i'll just say it's a strong album great dance album good weekend music from ellison goldfrapp number 16 is flying colors from melbourne australia not sure where that photo's from looks like it's uh, somewhere in the northwest doesn't look much like australia this is the third album fuzzy guitars um, very sort of early 90s feel to it when i first played it i thought i was listening to the stone roses second album how it should have sounded really good album might suffer a little bit from the middle of the album falling off a little bit very strong at the beginning and at the end I've seen a few people show this album it's one i do enjoy but there's some very very strong albums this year so got this one at number 16 flying colors and you never know number 15 is the fifth album by the slow show from manchester absolutely love that artwork so um subtle love very subtle album not a very subtle orange but um if you like um, the national and you like elbow i'm sure you'd love the slow show I spoke about them a couple of times on my channel and um all their albums are sort of slow burners this is no exception in a year's time it'll probably be in the top 10 at the moment it's number 15 subtle love by the slow show and number 14 is an album that came out in november mermaidens self-titled album fourth album by this trio from new zealand two girls and a guy on the drums again girls with guitars so um, i was watching them on youtube and I was hooked. Very sort of reminiscent to Always, the Canadian trio. But not as successful, but I don't know why, because I think this is a very strong album. It comes on red vinyl, but it's only been out for a couple of months. Um, but like to be alone, sister, push it, sour lips. If you have a look at them on YouTube, I'm sure you'd see what I'm talking about. On the hype, it says um, definitive statement of post-punk psych pop indie rock from New Zealand's Power Trio. So I think that sums it up. Certainly worth checking out Mermaiden's self-titled fourth album. Coming in at number 14. And number 13 is one of my favourite bands, Bombay Bicycle Club. Curtis has joined us. So we're lucky to have his presence here. So I absolutely cannot stand that album cover. Probably held off buying it because of that album cover. But this is just what you want to hear if you're a fan of Bombay Bicycle Club. A um, couple of featured artists as well. Damon Albans on here and Chaka Khan bursts into one of the songs. Great opening track, just a little more time. Came out in October didn't disappoint great album by bombay bicycle club my big day coming in at number 12 oh number 13 coming in at number 12 is sparkle horse bird machine so we lost mark lingus in 2010 took his own life so 13 years later um his brother matt and sister-in-law melissa got together working on old recordings he'd been working on came up with this album apart from the opening track i really think this is a great representation of mark's work um I, it's a coincidence because i just started listening to quite a lot of sparkle horse last year and their albums are pretty difficult to find on vinyl even the cds aren't easy to find and then I read that this was coming out. So when it came out, I just 
every time I listen to it, I enjoy it more and more. It's a really good album. Number 12, Sparkle Horse and Bird Machine. And just missing out on the top 10 is Reverend and the Makers. And this album's called Heatwave in the Cold North. It's pretty cold today in, in the Oldham area. Freezing, in fact. That's where the cat's in. So that is a normal pose for someone from Sheffield going home from work. Most people in Sheffield do have a camel. So don't be shocked by that. Oh, a pretty strange album cover. <coughs> so, more camels inside. Um, so this was a summer album for me. It came out in in April. I think it's the seventh album by Reverend and the Makers. And they it probably... The debut single, Heavyweight Champion of the World, came out in 2005, and that was quite a big hit. Since then, they've not really been that successful. They've released a lot of material. But for some reason, I just started listening to this album. I couldn't believe how good it was. The one track on here, Letter to My 21-Year-Old Self, I think is a great track. Heatwave in the Cold North, another one, Problems. Really strong album, really enjoyable, very summery. Bit of a um, Super Furries vibe to it and uh, Flaming Lips as well. Very enjoyable and a great cover. Reverend of the Makers coming in at number 11. And at number 10, we've got The National and Laugh Track. So this is the second um, National album that came out last year um, in September. And I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it is. Um, big fan of The National, but the previous couple of albums I wasn't as keen on. But then the two they brought out last year, I think, really strong. I could go by every track on here, but I'll just say it's a very strong album. Phoebe Bridges is on here as well. A couple of other people. Um, very strong. Probably suffers that it came out in September. The other one came out in April. But uh, very strong, very enjoyable. The National coming in at number 10. And at number 9, Corey Bailey Ray, Black Rainbow. So this is another really enjoyable album. Um, a lot of people were sort of talking about this album. I kept thinking, I'll give it a listen, I'll give it a listen. I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it is. The jazz feel, an indie feel, soul feel, influenced by the Bank Museum in Chicago. She was reading about it, she visited it, and it influenced her on this album. And it's very strong, very enjoyable, a lot of fun, just great listen. Number nine, Corey Bailey Ray. Coming in at number eight is Far Caspian. So... This album is called The Last Remaining Light. I think it came out in March. So Far Caspian is one guy who's called Joel Johnson and he's a producer, plays all the instruments. They got the band, they got a band together to tour this album, the second album. Um, but he recorded it in Leeds. It's just lo-fi, indie, but don't let, don't let that description put you off. It's a really good listen. He even did the artwork. I think he drove the tour bus as well. Just a really good album. Well worth checking out. Uh, opening track on here, Commuter, Repeating and The Last Remaining Light. Two great opening tracks. But it's consistent, back to front. Well worth checking out. Uh, Far Caspian and The Last Remaining Light is my number eight. And my number seven is Squid or Monolith. So again, the debut album um, is really strong and this is very strong as well. Um, the opening track, uh, Swing in a Dream, is just superb. Instrumentation's great. It's just tales of the unexpected. It's um, post-punk. Um, 
what is it, post-punk prog, I think that's what they call it. And um, yeah, it's hard to disagree with that description, but you, you just, it's just enjoyable for me. There's something about Squid that I, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a big fan and uh, I find this a lot of fun, really enjoyable. So it's my number seven. It's Squid and Old Monolith. And number six is the first national album. The first two pages of, of Frankenstein came out in April. So when this came out, I was like, I couldn't believe how good it was. We got our national back and um, they played Manchester in July, I think. So I'm going to get a ticket for that. If you're going to play tracks from these two albums it's going to be something special even Taylor Swift's on this album uh, if you look on YouTube silly views for for, for that video um, new order t-shirts on here again you could go through every track just a very strong national album one of my favorites so it's number six it's the national and number five is Blur the Ballad of Darren I uh, wasn't expecting a Blur album to come out in 2023. So it was a nice surprise. And I couldn't believe how strong it, how strong this album is. Um, starts off with a ballad, Barbaric, very sort of uni like the Universal to me. Narcissist is great. There's a couple of tracks on here that are heavily influenced by David Bowie, I'd say. Um, just... Just a really solid Blur album. Probably might even be my second favourite Blur album. So prolific, Damon Alban. He released a, a Gorillaz album last year and, you know, there's no end to his creative juices. This is a really good album. I like the artwork as well. I like the title of the album. This makes me smile. I mean, they got together, they played Wembley. Did quite a big tour, um, but Damon said that's it now. He's not doing anything with Blur in the near future. So, well, I hope this isn't the end uh, because there's, you know, there's so much more that Damon can do. And this is a really good album. The ninth album by Blur, Ballad of Darren, number five. Number four, Rossi Murphy, Hit Parade. So this came out in September. September, there were loads of stuff came out. It's crazy artwork. Not too sure about that. But the artwork on here is... This is the album that Madonna wants to make, but can't make. Um, there's a Prince vibe on here as well. Um, so, 50 years old. Not slowing down. Creatively, probably... The best she's ever been. Um, I like all the solo albums and I like Maloko's albums as well. I think she's a little bit underappreciated. Bit of controversy last year. Everything she said, I stand by everything she said. Um, Irish, lived in Sheffield for quite a while. Now she's in Ibiza and you can tell she's in Ibiza with the feel of this album. Great production. Nearly every song on here is killer. It's just a great album. Great fun. Great listen. Sit with all these albums. It's like so many great albums here. So put them in the chart isn't easy, but um, it's a bit of fun. And this is my number four hit parade by the fantastic Rosie Murphy. Number three, this is a bit of a shock. Um, Everything is Alive by Slow Dive. So sort of um i wasn't expecting to be picking this album up but the opening track uh, shanty is an absolute masterpiece sort of electronic got a bit of a cure feel to it sort of faith album even early new order um and this album has just moved up my chart i bought it i listened to it i thought yeah i really like it so i bought it and every time I play it, I just it goes up in my estimations. Um, you know, slow dive for me, 
you know, they got back together again a few years ago and the music they're doing now is just this is just great album and uh, every time i listen to it it goes up the chart so if i did this chart in february it might be number one but uh, at the moment it's number three i've seen a few people show this album but i'm really enthusiastic about it i love it so it's my number three my number two is um no gallagher's high flying birds council skies first side on this is epic he's just you know some of the best songs he's wrote in years side two is pretty strong as well um not giving up tonight it's a great opener i'll show you the vinyl on this one it's on blue vinyl but you know Noel's not done an album for quite a few years and and he's really, really got a great sound on this. Strings on it as well. Just uh, every time I play this, I, pl I played the hell out of this early in the year. I had to give it a break. I was playing it that much. I was getting a lot of stick from people I work with. Taking the mickey, saying he's playing that again. But I came back to it later in the year thinking, I'm going to like it as much. I still love it. So no Gallagher. Council Skies is my number two. My number one is Bunny by Beach Fossils. So, great songwriting, um, very nostalgic, laid back style. Reminds me of sort of um, um, Teenage Fan Club, sort of 30 somethings, sort of reflecting on their lives. Great summer music, uh, the touring, the play Manchester in um, February, I think. Going to go and see them. Tickets aren't too expensive. From New York, opening track, Sleeping on My Own, Paranoid Boyfriend. But every track on here, it doesn't let up. <laughs> you know, when I was listening to it for the first time, thinking, well, yeah, the first few tracks, it's going to, it's going to, you know, drop off a bit. It doesn't. It gets better, if anything, at the end. Waterfall, great closer. So my favourite album of 2023 is Bunny. The fourth album by uh, Beach Fossils. I think it came out in May. So, yeah, ever since I've heard this album, I thought it's going to be my number one. Every time I play it, I love it more. So great album, Bunny by Beach Fossils. So those are my top 20. Great year. Uh, really enjoyed getting these albums in my collection and I've got to give them time because they're just really good albums. Um, I, I saw quite a lot of videos at the end of the year with people showing the favourite records and uh, I've been eager to shoot this video and um, show my 20 favourites. So hope you enjoyed the video. Happy New Year, by the way. Hoping to get quite a few videos done this year. I think last year I did 22. I'm hoping to to do a few more than that if you've got any comments about what i showed on this video i um, hope you're gonna maybe listen to a few of them if you've not heard them before and uh, that's the point of the video really to check some of these albums out leave me a comment thanks for watching and bye for now